uh, Java programming than Java programming. And I see that a lot of times people do uh, hacking and security guys, I think they are super smart. But when I back then taught myself PLC programming and was able to find a weak spot in a complex system, how hard is it to hack and how easy is it or hard is it to protect? So let's talk about, I have, like, for my son's story, four years ago I had a time out. I promised my wife two weeks of vacation and she finally got them. And I took the motorbike up to the North Cup. And the good thing is then you're not connected. There are spots where you have no internet connection, no cell phone connection, nothing. So I was in this void and enjoyed a nice view of Norway and on the motorbike in the corners. It's a really great time. And I come back two weeks later and guess what? Nothing changed. Not to the good, every security problem is solved, and not to the bad, not the world didn't stop existing. So I was thinking, well, what is different? What, what is, how can we achieve something? Hackers exist in the 70s, but what is the problem? And how can we achieve to make it really better? By breaking it? But this talks actually about thinking out of the box. I know several years ago, it was like big hype, out of the box thinking. I, can't, I don't hear about this anymore. What's well, actually good, because there is no out of the box thinking. The box in this context is what you are. It's your uh, luggage. It's that what you experience, your education, everything you ex uh, received as knowledge in the past. And you cannot look at something else and from outside your own box. So apparently, we look from our box to other boxes, or we should. But apparently, as we people, we stick in our box. It's our safety, it's our comfort zone, it's our knowledge. So we look at other boxes and say, hey, this is wrong. But do we understand the other box? So that's how, when I come up with this, actually it was triggered by Ernesto, and this is talk, TEDx talk. He was this, uh, eight, working for eight programs in Africa. And he has this great story on his hilarious way explaining how he as a young guy in the 70s from Italy goes to Africa, Zimbabwe, and does an aid program. So he says, I'm Italian, I'm good in growing vegetables. And there's a food problem in Africa. So he explains how he goes there, and there's, of course, this river delta. It's really volatile uh, ground. So Italians good in growing vegetables, and he's like saying in, in Italy, tomatoes are like this, there, they were like that. So the aid programmers put in money and grow vegetables. So everybody was happy from the aid program side, but, but guess what happened? The vegetables were ready to be eaten, and suddenly a lot of hippos appeared and ate all these vegetables. They were like shocked, like, wow, where are hippos, where can they come from? Why haven't you told us? And the log group said, he don't ask. And isn't that the same way we as security community engage to developers? We say, oh, your problem is your code is not secure. That's a big problem. But do we understand what their problem really is? And do we help them in the most positive, most best way? No, because we come with PDF reports, we come with, you should not do that, but it's only one of their concerns. Most developers are not taught about security anyway. When you look in the curriculums or universities, when you ask for security, you get network security and cryptography. Security development? And what do we do as security people? We make it more complex. So we add a lot of stuff that actually the developer does not care about. Threat modeling, abuse cases. Is it the right way? So I see these hippos as something you can raise resources in. Time and money resource wasted for the mystical security hippos. So let's talk about what you should not do. Some security myths. Actually, that security has a bad name. It's our fault, a security community. We did a lot of things wrong. First of all, security is very serious. You cannot laugh about security. It's very high priority. It's kind of shouting wolf too many times. So you see this on the news, that this bank is hacked, next bank is hacked, and people don't care about it because it's just another story. Shouting wolf too many times. Very important. We say security is expensive. That's kind of the, the business side of. So when you want to have security, you need a very expensive security guideline, very expensive security consultant outside. That's where I make money with. 
and most of all, security is complex. So when you understand the world of a developer, who is managing development projects? Is it the project manager? And what is the business of a project manager? What is his concerns? To be on time and in budget. So what the project manager does not want anything that is complex or expensive. So that makes like they don't want to have security because we tell them it's very complex and it's expensive. And we wonder why they don't want us. Because we are like on the place that things they least want. So that's a mess we should take care of. We should actually remove the security stamp and make it more visible. The things you should do. Don't be the main security guy. That's the big thing. When you're business security, you always hear as like ministry of no. Security is disabling functionality. It's not allowing you to go to production. It's not, it's not, it's not. So what I experience is whatever I want, and I go to the security guys, they can say no. It's not helping. We should tell them security is enabling, not forbidding. Yes, we want to enable secure communications, uh, communications, and we make it responsible by making it secure. Yes, we want to have online business, and security makes it responsible way to make. Yes, we are helping them, we are enabling them. This is a nice uh, anecdote from Henry Ford, when they asked him, why does a car have brakes? So what do you think, why does a car have brakes? It was not a rhetorical question, no answers. Okay. Most people think because you want to break, you want to stop. That would be the ministry of no, the disabling factor. And the antidote, what actually is not true, says, no, a car has brakes, so response will be able to drive faster. So there's a different way to think about functionality and security. Oh, sorry. Next one is don't hide. And so many times the security officer is either hidden far away, or the security expert, what they do, they come in, they do a security test, and where are they? Working from home, working from remote systems, and or in a different wing or room than the development team. So this is the guys in black coming in, super cool, sunglasses, go in the room, making the black magic, and deliver a PDF report. No visibility, no engagement. So they hide. So you have to be out there, you have to face security. People should be able to find you. Every border you add, it's very hard. So you be among the people who you want to teach. Be available. It's a very important one that a lot of people miss. I talked to a customer uh, CEO, and I told him about security development. I said, I want to talk to the project managers, the business, the te functional testers, developer. Functional testers will often forget to engage with, because that's a security resource. It's negligated. And I said, all the people I want to engage to improve security. And he was like, side. So what? This is a great thing about our job. We do technical stuff and we have to talk to people. But apparently, we are being technical people, we are not good in talking. That's really a pitfall. So we have to learn to talk and be enthusiastic about all, what we do. Meet others. So understand their problems. I went to a, a customer talk, uh, so engagement. We had actually the business and the technical people in the same meeting room. What I first noticed, they were introducing each other to each other. It's like, you're colleagues. You're on the same floor. It's like, yes, but it's the other wing. That's the tech guys and developers, and we are the business. So that's the first time they met the meeting when I report my results. It's quite a bit of late, isn't it? But it's very normal. People always look for their comfort zone. When I started working at my previous company, they had all the technologies, and the units were not by technology, but by region where they come from. So I was a new guy, Java developer. So I went around the tables. I said, oh, who are you? Yeah, we are the Java developers. All of you? Yes. So make the next table. Who are you guys? We are the Oracle system admins. That's awkward. Next table, what the corporate people. So all people were clunched together in their professionality. They looked at me like, you should be over there. That's Java developer. So we are colleagues. We work together. And sometimes people have a fear to engage it. And it's very pity. Because then you can learn. What is the advantage of other languages? For example, a lot of people laugh about COBOL, isn't it? It's like ever dying. But COBOL has very, very good things because COBOL developers by default are very high quality on coding. Like we laugh about SQL injection still, but you won't find an SQL injection from an old fashioned COBOL developer. Why? Pre compiled queries. That's how to do it. Parameterized queries. It's the normal way to do it. It's not security. 
It's the way how do you address your database. That should be saying for the other developers, so you should learn from it. Pay attention, listen to them, listen about the problem. Look around. And the developer has so many things to think about. Most of all, yeah, deliver software as fast as possible. So engage and understand. Share a beer. As I said, in the past, actually my employer should uh, sponsor my smoking. Because when you have a meeting and the manager is there, no word about what's going wrong, isn't it? The man no, the manager, we do not talk to the other people about our problems. Then you go outside for a smoke, what's actually last year's getting harder and harder to find other smokers. Then you hear everything. So actually, you should pay me for smoking. More people should smoke or drink. Drink is over to them. And listen to them. Not only sending about bad things, listening about their problems, problems with their considerations. Understanding their context. It's a very important one. Because we come as security people, A, a PDF report. That's a waste of time and digital paper. Because a PDF report, you can do nothing. It does not help the developer. If it's just another report, let's file them. Okay, it's good. You want to have a dynamic way to share the knowledge. What do I found? Why did I find it? When I engage to the application. But even before I do a security test, I always engage with the team. And many times when I did a code review or a penetration test, I almost had not nothing to do because at the first when you talk to the team, they know about the problem. When you're not like this angry external core bashing security guy, why don't you say, hey, I was developer too, so tell me about the project. You hear about the problems. And I can be the external lever to help to improve their code because they know the problems. And you are the lever to make it possible because you are external and you know more. Like internal people are always like, ah, oh, they're bothering. External, oh, he's an external security guy. We have to do what he's saying. So you can help them improve security. It help them to solve their problems. Support them. First thing is, a developer needs to be appreciated. I was a developer, but you always hear, you are too expensive. Nobody's like, oh, you're a developer, I won't pay you more. You're too expensive. You're too late, too slow. And uh, we're going to outsource you anyway. That makes you really feel appreciated, isn't it? So imagine you're a developer, you're doing your best, you care about your code, and then you get that. Oh, we might outsource you anyway. That's not really good. Whatever job you do, if you appreciate it, you do it well. If you're a window cleaner, a developer, or a toilet lady, appreciation for your work, caring for your problems is very important. But somehow, a lot of companies think software is expensive and we don't really need it, like all IT. I don't understand why banks' insurances don't understand they are actually software development companies with the banking or insurance licenses. Because remove the IT from a bank, what is left? The license, no functionality. So you have to understand that development IT is not the cost sector, it's enabling, it keeps you in business. And also the people who work there, you have to enable and appreciate them. So other talk I have, it's about hug, appreciate developer, hacker developer. Be friends with them. Appreciation. It's very important. A lot of people fail in this because we don't understand the context. And it's like funny because in the past when you looked around, you almost could tell who is a corporate programmer because there's people with the big glasses and the checked shirts, pens in there, isn't it? The, don't, the mobile apps developer these days, the young, lean, young developers, uh, flashy, modern, sh short, ha uh, strange haircut. But they have a history uh, feeling, it's like well, three years old, it's, it's ages, outdated. But when you tell them about the past, that will help you. When you look in the box, it's very weird that when you look in the app store developers, or app developers, you find teams that like every age is like just above 20, 23, 24. And yes, they're eager to develop, it's nice. And you need these people, the young, driven, full of test room and running up to the mountains. But you need also different people. You need maybe one or two older people. They're like, maybe it's not that smart to do it that way. Who have the understanding of the problems in the past. I know a team actually where one of the developers is about 50, 
It's a mobile app developer, and he's about 50. And when I engaged first with the team, they're like, oh, that's cool. Look at him. He's about 50, and he develops mobile uh, Android apps. He's a Java developer for plus 16, 18 years. I'm like, yes, but it's, it's mobile. It's different. I'm like, guys, okay, time to grow. Maybe it's because I'm getting older. It's like, and then I talked to the other guy from, uh, separately because it was the one smoker. He said, yeah, actually, you're not... You're right, because when we have an idea, he's the guy who's just saying, hmm, and then they start like, hmm, what? And he's telling about what could happen from his experience in the past. What is very funny, I uh, did an assignment in uh, Romania, uh, sorry, Bulgaria, and I found that there, it's like more than half of the employees do technical stuff, it's female. Oh, that's very interesting. So I said, asked the uh, manager, how comes? He said, they look for people because they do support and development together. So they look for smart people, technical people, who can actually talk business and understand. And you know what? They couldn't find males to do that, very few, only females. So actually, we extend our box, our knowledge box, our background from our project by adding different boxes. So a team has to be most various people in the team. And actually, a security guy should be there as well. So I still see that there's a development team and there's a security. And all the way they talk is they're getting rid of the security issues. Like one way, like fix this, fix this. Stop helping. So understanding that. And even how we deliver reports, it's very awkward. We come with another system, PDF files, forget about us. That's for management. Oh, yeah, we've got a file, we can file it. But having a dynamic, A, share the knowledge, how you found it. So not only say, this is wrong. How engaged the application, what I found, what is my, the, I call it the treasure trail. How I went to the, find the gold market. What was my considerations, why I did stuff. When you engage your application, it's not just running tool, finding repo, uh, issues, and then reporting, I hope. So when you have an application, isn't it? Then you have a feeling. It's like, this is a bit awkward. I see strange parameters here. Write it down. Write-ups is very important. And we do a security test, share your knowledge. Have a meeting. I do a training and I tell people about how you share reports. And they say, oh yeah, we get an encrypted zip file. Like, okay. Do the security testers talk to you? Like, sometimes you see them like walking by in their magic room, but they're not engaging. I said, you should ask for it. I said, I will not do a security report with not telling the team or asking for it, be able to tell the team what I did, how I did it, and why I did it, and go through the issues, what I found. And they said, yes, a playbook says it costs approximately uh, 6,000 euros, and if you want to have this report uh, discussed, it's 1,500 euros extra. So actually, they should like, smack the security guy and send him off. Because even if they can't explain it, you fail. So don't upset people. Say what? When you want to engage them, you want to listen to them, you should not upset them, of course. But that is what security people do. I got fed up because when another security conference, another guy talking about how stupid developers are, bragging about his own tool he wrote, he said, you can download it for free at GitHub, but don't look at the source code because I can't develop. So we blaming people, they don't do the work properly, but we don't understand or cannot do it ourselves. So I smack you in the face and ask you to listen. It's not the most ideal way to engage with other people. Shut up and listen. That is actually the end quote of uh, Ernesto's talk in TEDx. We try to send, but just be there. Listen, spring open. Developers do know about security when they are about the quality of the code. The blood, sweat, and tears, the sleepless nights is about coding. If you can trigger them and appreciate them for being a coder. Then they will dream about the code. I was an idiot like that. I went, did coding, but then, at, uh, of course, business hours, good is good enough. I went home and I improved my code, so because I wasn't certified. This eagerness on delivering high quality code is very important. That's what you have want to have in your team. When you achieve that, of course, there are also people that only work to get money. We should not blame them. That's a legitimate reason to work, isn't it? I'm happy I, I make my hobby my job. But to make it possible to make them eager for code quality, 
and tell them like actually security making the security stem is like ah security again and it's all this bad thing we said about security they stop listening so you should go there list their problems and another thing is to deliver the report the issues is dynamically so forget about the pf reports think about code quality there are a lot of code quality tools out there and they're using them actually good developers and if they tweak them correctly that is the first step to removing security problems. Using cyclometric complexity for removing complex code, redundant complexity. Tell them about it and understand their problems, understand their world, and deliver the issues you find in their systems, not another system, like a security system. So they have the IDE, they have Jira, they have everything, and then you come with the security system, adding more complexity. You should make their work easier, not more complex. It's important. That was my talk. Any questions? I agree with what you say. Thank you. Let's start with that. Um, I find the, the biggest problem is not so much the developers, more uh, management. So actually uh, incorporate all the things that Yes, it's a problem because we say security is expensive and complex. So the first thing, that's why my customer said, I need to talk to business. Because business wants to be enablement and security is known to be the Ministry of No. So I want to enable them for having the business running in time of market. So when you tell them you want to have this functionality, responsible, these are things you can do at the development process, like increasing the maturity of software development. One thing is uh, even that's more complex. It's like there is a way how we should write secure code. That's a way how we should make SQL queries by parameterizing queries. And what we now see is like, oh, we do first threat modeling. A developer doesn't care about threat modeling. Business doesn't care about threat modeling. They don't understand it. It's like this, that's what security people do. So make it more people speak their language and understand that. The business is caring about one thing, money. So say, okay, we can reduce the cost by training and educating. Okay. Well, thank you.